Well, thanks again for joining us here on a Monday. I'm Marlon Bowling with you as we watch your grain and livestock market action to start the new week. And here to help us analyze our grain market action, we turn to our regular contributor who uh, happens to walk into the studios from just down the street. We have Chris Swift with us. And uh, Chris is Good with Swift Trading. Absolutely. Good Thanks, morning. sir. Happy Good morning. Monday. Thanks, sir. Same to you. So what do you think? Uh, much happened over the weekend in the grain trade or not? Not a great deal. We started off lower last night and continued all the way through this morning. So not a great deal happened this morning. We were about a nickel softer in the beans when I left the office and down about two or three cents in the uh, corn market. The wheat market had started to get plus on the day as I left, but that's about the extent of it so far. All right. Well, let's go take a look at the prices, okay. if you don't mind, and we'll dive into them here on the corn market first. Let's take a close look. On the corn, well, we opened up about a penny and a quarter weaker, and now we have December corn three quarters higher. You're absolutely right. 354 is the last trade now, and now <clears throat> we are back within just one tick of our high of the day. The March up a half at 366 and a half right now. Now on the soybean trade, this is the one that had been under uh, pressure earlier. Let's take a look at uh, where we are now trading. Uh, if we can, maybe we can't. Soybean trade, there we go. May wave the magic wand. There you have November down six at 978 and a quarter now, Chris. So that is about seven cents off our overnight high. We have bounced just a couple of pennies off our earlier low. January down five and three quarters at 988 and three quarters. Let's stop right there for the moment and talk about the harvest activity that's ramping up, but we have some rain moving into the plains. Is that going to be an issue or not? Um, I don't think it'll be too much. Beans are still pretty far behind right now, so I don't think we're going to see too awful much of the rain hampering anything. They really need some rain. Um, I think that a lot of areas could use some rain to finish up the bean crop and feel those pods filling out, and it could probably, uh, probably help the crop more than it would hurt it right now. Um, Corn might, might hurt hamper corn harvest just a little bit, but mm -hmm. uh, they're still cutting silage way up north, and we've been shelling corn down south pretty hard. Um, so I, I don't think it'll do too much. It kind of sounds like uh, as that frontal system moves eastward out of the plains, it'll just kind of fall apart. And mm -hmm. it sounds like the eastern corn belt probably won't get that much impact. No, I don't think that they will. All right. So now with that in mind, uh, what do you look for for harvest numbers uh, when USDA comes out with their weekly update here this afternoon? Well, I don't think there'll be too much difference. I think we'll probably see another 2 to 3 percent more harvested in the corn market. Um, I don't think you'll see any increase in the bean market. Um, I think down south is the only ones that they've had harvested. So I don't think there'll be much of an increase in it. This morning we had a, a bump in the value of the U.S. dollar mm -hmm. on the index. It was up about 330 points when we last looked. And right now it's up 310 on December futures, we're at 92.280. Is that a problem for the ag market or not? Um, not yet, because it's still at a low level. It is still trading at the lower 5% of the range that it's been trading in, and primarily that is due to Europe. Europe is on their process of fixing to turn their um, the uh, quantitative easing around. They're fixing to stop their stimulus packages. They're the last country that I can think of that is still on the stimulus package. So that weakened their currency greatly, which of course strengthens ours. All right. Let's take a look at the wheat trade in Chicago wheat right now on that December contract. We're now three and a quarter higher, as Chris mentioned. Uh, 452 and three quarters is now our last trade, and we have rebounded almost nine cents off our earlier low. Uh, let's look at Kansas City wheat here. December now one and three quarters higher at 452, and that one is also about eight, eight and a half cents off of its earlier low this morning, and now on the high of the day. And if you look at the Minneapolis wheat trade on spring wheat, we are now, wow, 14 and a quarter higher at 649 per bushel. That's just two ticks now from our high of the day. So uh, as uh, Chris alluded to, we have had a big surge here in the market just in the last uh, 20 minutes or so. Let's look at the cotton market before we get into our break. And on the December new crop cotton, we're now 19 points higher, quoted at 68.65 cents per pound. We're going to come back in just a moment, and I want to talk with Chris about what's going on in our livestock trade. A lot to talk about there with the USDA numbers. I want to pick his brain about this dairy industry, too, see what's going on there when we come back right after this. Well, we're back. We're talking with Chris Swift of Swift Trading Incorporated, and he is based in Nashville, uh, not too far from our studio. So he uh, joins us here on set today to talk about the livestock trade. Uh, uh, just a quick recap of the cattle on feed numbers that came out Friday afternoon, in case you missed it. Uh, very bearish numbers on the placements number. We had the uh, placements coming in uh, sharply higher than what the trade was expecting. 103% is what the number was from USDA. Trade was looking for 97.3. 
And we had a sharp negative reaction this morning on the futures trade. Let's look at our live cattle board right now. Uh, currently in Chicago, we have October down 288. Wow, there they go, Chris. December, February, April, June, all limit down now, $3 lower all across the board. Let's see how the uh, feeder cattle trade is doing right now. Well, same story there. Nearby September is trading. It's down 270, but all the other months are now lock limit down. October through March of next year, down four and a half dollars. Chris, I'm looking at the cash cattle trade that developed uh, late last week on Friday. And we moved many thousands of head of cash cattle. It looks like Kansas, uh, we sold about 19,000 head, Nebraska 5,500, Texas 6,700 head, uh, Colorado 1,500 head, and Iowa 9,100 head last week. And that was at a market um, structure, I guess you would say, about $2 higher than the week before. And then you had these numbers hit. It is. How off guard did the, the USDA numbers catch the market and, and what does that mean moving forward now? Well, it did catch them off guard quite a bit. Uh, a lot of people had assumed by the heavier placements that we've had all year that they would begin to be dwindling. Uh, I think the drought up in the northern sections has moved a lot more cattle out of that area coming into the fall than what they had anticipated. More likely than not, that means that fewer animals will be placed on down the road. But uh, it, it is an impact to it. We continue to move beef as our marketing number was 106. So again, year over year, we have seen the elevated numbers, but month over month, they start to dwindle just a little bit from what we have seen early in the summer to now. Now, last week when you were here, we were talking about uh, milk prices, mm -hmm. uh, class three milk on the futures. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can take a look at uh, what the prices are right now. Okay. But, but last week, uh, that was after having a, a long decline in the milk prices. It looked like maybe things had stabilized. We have October uh, priced about nine cents higher at 1626 right now. What do you think um, the future is here nearby in the milk trade, well, at they, least for the next couple of weeks? Yeah, they bounced off the bottom, and the butter market is really good. Uh, the butter market this time of the year has a tendency to increase in price, and of course that pull has helped. Uh, processing has increased a little bit for the milk market, so that helps keep it flowing. Uh, through the through the channels, but uh, I don't see much right now in it. Uh, milk production will naturally increase just a little bit as the weather matures uh, or uh, the weather begins to uh, cool off a little bit. All right, so let's take a look at the uh, lean hog trade here too okay. uh, while we have a moment. Now, the lean hogs, they opened up under a little bit of pressure this morning, but uh, right now it's fairly flat. October now 45 higher at 56.15. December though, down a couple of pennies. February down 12 at 61.78 per hundred weight. Is this a market that's just kind of on the sidelines right now, do you think? Well, it's still moving lower. It's in a downtrend. Uh, we have not seen any break in the downtrend yet in the hog market. Uh, as long as the cash market keeps dropping, and again, it's been down anywhere from 80 cents to $1.20 just about every day. Mm -hmm. And with the positive basis, they are trying to sell cash as fast as they can because they know that in the future, they're not going to get any higher price for it. Do you see a bottom anywhere close? Um, it could be. The, um, the interesting part is we didn't see any kind of decreases in the last hogs and pigs report, so I'm not real sure that we're going to see any less supply in, uh, going into the first quarter of next year. What we need is demand. All right. Well, Chris, thanks for coming in. Appreciate Absolutely, it. Martin. Thank you, sir. Look forward to our visit next week again, Good. too. Thank you. Chris Swift. He is with Swift Trading Incorporated right here in Nashville. So, Christina, that's the open cattle market limit down right now. Wow. What a way to start a brand new <laughs> it week. It is. But you know what? We got <laughs> those numbers trade. on Friday. So, okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Markets Editor Marlon Bowling. Thank you, you for joining us as well, Mr. Swift. Thank you.